Welcome to this episode of sketch to see In today's episode, we're going to talk about the research process. How did I build the knowledge base in order to make the decisions that we made? What experiences did I have along my journey to create the ability to make these decisions that I wanted to have in my forever boat? It might actually surprise you that going to boat shows and touring a ton of other boats was definitely not part of the process. If you've watched episode number two of Sketch to Sea, you're well on your way to finding out what type of boat that you want. You've narrowed down your selection process, and now you're ready to proceed researching in that exact direction. As you're probably finding out, where I started and where I ended up is drastically different than I expected. Some of the key elements of my research process were online research, speaking to industry professionals, chartering boats, being on boats, spending time at the docks, and most beneficial was interviews with captains because these are people that are day in, day out, on board, living, breathing, and experiencing different vessels. My number one recommendation is definitely speaking to people. YouTube can be a great resource because you must be able to qualify the people you're actually viewing and learning from on YouTube itself. As I noted in one of the earlier episodes, I've always liked the sleek look of monohulls. More specifically, the Dubois-designed alloy yachts built out of New Zealand. There was just something timeless about the lovely, elegant lines of these elite sailing yachts. Monohulls is where I spent the most of my time, and that's why I was specifically originally looking at perching a large sloop-rigged monohull. Some of my first sailing experiences were in Darling Harbor on a Hunter 38, and extended all the way to a 42-foot Beneteau in the San Francisco Bay where I was crew racing. I've also had the opportunity to go on a couple of other catamarans, uh, a 76 Matrix Silhouette built out of South Africa uh, was the first time I experienced a main level master on a catamaran, and that was a phenomenal experience. I've also been on several large Phoenici style schooners. Uh, these are very unique boats and definitely not something I would plan on owning because the maintenance, the difficulty, and the crew requirements, and they don't really sail very efficiently. I've also had the opportunity to be on several large motor yachts, uh, namely Skyfall and Motor Yacht Trending. I've also toured the recently launched Spectre. Um, these boats definitely helped me and contributed primarily towards the interior layouts and the type of fit and finish that we were really looking to achieve on our boat. Once we had the opportunity to have the two weeks on board the Matrix 76 with the main level master, we were sold. Not only just sold on catamarans, but we added the main level master to our must haves. This fundamentally changed our onboard experience. We were hooked. The amount of space and the comfort and then every morning to wake up and see that 180 degree panoramic view from our bed was just incredible. We knew we had to achieve it somehow. On board that Matrix 76, we had a great time, mainly because of the captain and the crew. And that captain became an invaluable resource for me. Keep in mind, this was all the way back in 2013, and I have been doing continuous research and in constant contact with that captain and other captains throughout the years. The reason I speak so highly of captains on board is because they're living and breathing that vessel every day. And chances are, they love talking about boats just as much as I do. So typically, because it's a love affair for them, they're always happy to share their experiences and their knowledge, whether it be good, bad, reviews, anything about the vessel that they're on and other vessels that they've had experience on. Chances are the captain that you're dealing with today has probably been on 20 to 30 boats throughout their lifetime. So I'm sure as many of you know, motor yachts are drastically different than sail yachts. And once you get into sail yachts, Monohulls are drastically different than catamarans. The reason why we chose not to go with that alloy yacht, that beautiful, sleek monohull, was simply interior volume. You essentially have to purchase, design, or build a yacht that is twice the length to get the same amount of interior volume as a catamaran. In addition to that, there's also the stability aspect of it. Everyday enjoyability is just so much easier because you have such a larger platform to live on, more space to maneuver, more space for storage and accommodation, and all of this just comes with the platform. It's not like you have to plan extra for this. It's a freebie, it's a given. But I'm not gonna go into much more detail about monohulls versus catamarans. There are tons of other videos out there. Um, feel free to look and listen.
So after being on the Matrix 76 and then going on these different motor yachts, I started to think, how can I combine these two experiences? I love the interior finish and the space and the layout of these large motor yachts, but I also loved the affordability and the space that came with this catamaran. And when I mean affordability, I specifically mean running costs, to be able to move your vessel from location A to B essentially for free. But as many of you may know, the interior finishes typically on these large motor yachts are drastically better than they are on a catamaran or any other production vessel. If you've watched video two, you've already narrowed down the selection process and have decided what, what type of yacht that you would like to purchase, build, or design. And it's up to you now to decide what sort of interior fit out and finish that you're gonna require on that yacht. For us, we were definitely trying to capture the motor yacht feel on our sailing yacht. And that is no small feat to take on. Some of the space benefits that we were able to achieve on our catamaran versus a monohull are a separate stew pantry. So anytime that a guest would want something or we would want something as owners, we could always just walk down and grab it without disturbing anybody in the galley. Also, we have separate refrigeration areas and bars for drinks. So we're keeping all the essential drinks and beverages and refreshments out of the galley. Again, not to disturb that space. This sort of accommodation is really only available on a catamaran versus a monohull. So albeit the crew requirements are drastically less on a sail yacht versus a motor yacht, we also have the space to accommodate any crew needs and desires in much more comfort than they would be on a monohull. I'm not saying they're gonna be as comfortable as they would be on a motor yacht, but we definitely did our best. Efficiency was the utmost important for us throughout our entire design of our yacht. So back to this whole topic about the main level master. Throughout the research process, I continually investigated any manufacturer that was willing to do this and found that there basically wasn't any out there that were going to do it reasonably. There was two or three that were willing to do it under the semi-custom umbrella in that product line offering that they had. Um, eventually I stumbled across Privilege Yachts, uh, which make a great product. It is a full fiberglass build from top to bottom, so relatively heavy, um, not the fastest, but they had a main level master concept all the way down to the 50 foot range, which I thought was great. And then I got on one and I was like, wow, I love this space, but I'm six feet tall and I don't want to crouch going into my bedroom. Thus the search continued. And keep in mind, this went on for many years as I'm gaining experience, chartering different boats, going on different boats, speaking to more people. The progress is ever evolving and changing. Also the market is as well. So many players and manufacturers and naval architects have entered or exited or actually shifted their place within the same marketplace. I know it's going to sound kind of cheesy and typical, but YouTube did turn out to be a good resource, but mainly for the people that were already out there doing it and living the lifestyle. I got to see how they used their boats, what they did enjoy about their boats, what they didn't enjoy about their boats. And a lot of the times you can pick up little quips that they have to offer about what they wish they would have done differently or what they wish they would have had available to them. Whether it was or not, whether it was by choice in the beginning, it was a production boat that they bought. So boat shows, why do I not think that this is the greatest resource? Well, one, everybody's out there to try and sell you something. There's always an ulterior motive. Don't get me wrong, boat shows have their place. They should be used as a confirmation tool after you've already made your decision. That I felt was the best time for you to go out there into the marketplace and actually tour these boats after you think you've made the correct decision or decided what you want in your yacht. Because typically at these boat shows, every, every manufacturer will have their best boat at the boat show. And their list price isn't always what the actual sail away price is. So again, these boat shows, as you go for this tour, it really just becomes an exercise in marketing. You're walking around and they won't let you on board the boat unless you, one, have pre-registered uh, or two, give up personal information. Nowadays, everything that you could possibly see at a boat show is available online via manufacturers, websites, or YouTube episodes. You can get tours of pretty much any vessel that's ever been made. Um, and different product lines from each manufacturer, all available via YouTube. 
A lot of these videos come with a detailed analysis and usually a summary after the fact, which details the pros, the cons, the negatives, and what these specific sailors or users would have done differently on that model of boat. But when you have the opportunity to go custom, you have the option to do what works for you. Not everybody else, not the masses, because not everybody uses their boat in the same manner. So personally for my wife and I, we never actually went to a boat show prior to signing our build contract with our manufacturer. When we finally did attend a boat show after our contract signing, we were there to look at some of the internal systems. This is what I feel is the most valuable use of a boat show. The ability to tour a sea zone or electronic mapping system for your yacht. Uh, visit some of the different security systems that are available for yachts. Uh, touring of the audio systems and see if there's actually a small head unit that's more cost effective to get distributed audio throughout the different systems of your yacht. That's where the benefit is. I mean, don't get me wrong, we certainly visited some of the bigger uh, production catamarans while we were at the show, but it was really just to confirm that we made the right decision going with the manufacturer that we did. So boat shows, if waiting in line and giving away your personal information is for you, have at it, enjoy. But if you've already made your decision and want just confirmation or to research some of the internal mechanisms that are gonna go along with your boat, that's the best benefit and use of your time at a boat show. Thanks for watching. If you found any information in this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. And as always, you can reach out to me at sketchtosee at gmail.com. Please feel free to follow along on Instagram at sketchtosee and Facebook. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again soon.